Alright, hello, so I've just done a video on my um, Problem of Evil video, um, on my Problem of Evil essay, so I'm going to do one on uh, a secularism essay that I did, and I, I got, uh, my teacher said this was an A or slash A star grade, uh, but I did this one for homework, so it wasn't under time conditions. Um, anyway, I'll just, I'm just going to read through it like I did in the last one, and then hopefully I, c I can listen to this back closer to my, um, Exams and maybe it'll come in handy. Um, yeah, right. So the question is: Secularism does more harm than good. Discuss. Um, okay, so basically, yeah, I'll just read through it. Um, secularism is essentially the decline in the importance of religion within a society. Prior to the twentieth century, religion played an important role in governing. My dog's being weird. Anyway, um. Religion played an important role in governing society. Due to the Renaissance and the rise of logical positivism, the West now places high value on rationality and many atheists, such as the Four Horsemen, make the claim that religion is largely irrational and should be eradicated. Some modern theologians, such as Richard Swinburne and William Lane Craig, attempt to refute this claim. A recent influence on the subject is Jordan Peterson, who has managed to captivate many atheists with his psychological interpretations on religious scripture and mythological stories, offering a new and rational perspective on religion. It would be delusional to claim that religion didn't have a part to play in historical conflict. Its rigid values excluded minorities and rejected libertarian progressiveness. A few examples of this are Jesus' actions on offering a, a preferential option for the poor, which caused great distress to the status quo prior to the first century. His actions and teachings almost got him excluded on numerous occasions leading up to the or almost got him executed on numerous occasions leading up to the crucifixion. Aquinas is another example. He got in trouble with the Roman Catholic Church for advocating Aristotelian reason. This rationality posed a threat to the church, so they tried to destroy all of his work and sense of Aristotelian philosophy within the context of the church. Assuming that society had become secular much sooner and that Christianity never flourished over the past millennia, people, perhaps social progression, would have been much faster. It is undeniable, even in the 20th to the 21st century, that religions inhibit scientific progression in many ways. Um, Judaism holds a firm opposition to the abortion debate due to pro-life rhetoric being prevalent in the Torah, an argument which isn't necessarily based on rationality, but based on texts written thousands of years ago. Other issues, such as stem cell research, has also been set back decades in the name of religion looking back at the ancient greeks um they were progressing extremely fast with their newfound way of looking at the world it seems fair to argue that religion has inhibited progress um but all of this is based on the assumption that progress is always good perhaps some progress can be detrimental due to secularization scientific thought has been able to flourish we now live in a digital age because of this with knowledge at, at our fingertips. This seems good. Ordinary people are able to educate themselves once, when once this would have been unheard of. But along with these developments, science, scientists have the ab ability to develop weapons of mass destruction, such as nuclear bombs, which could wipe out all life on planet Earth. We just have to trust that human nature isn't capable of such abhorrent acts. But judging by the horrors of the 20th century, we can't be so sure that this is the case. War, genocide, totalitarianism, nihilism, all of which Nietzsche predicted to be the con consequences of the death of God, which he claimed in his book, Thus Sp Spoke Zarathustra, Thar <laughs> um, by no means in a triumphant manner. Nietzsche was extremely critical of religion, claiming it promoted slave morality favouring a sickly ethic of pity, obedience and conformity. Many theologians, such as Carl Jung and Gustavo Gutierrez, made similar criticisms of Christianity, so Nietzsche certainly wasn't far from the truth. 
He wasn't so naive to think that the ablution of religion and the death of God would lead to a perfectly rational secular society, whereby slave morality dissipated and the individual flourished. Western morality was and is archetypally predicated on the idea of the Abrahamic God. Nietzsche recognised that we couldn't just remove the underlying structure of our morality and expect the ethic nested in this religious foundation to remain intact. And of course it didn't. The herd, as Nietzsche called them, wallowed in a pit of unindividuated nihilism with no God to determine their morality. Society perceived the disembodied ideal of the stirt as God. Both Stalin and Hitler played God, and the herd played along, not strong enough to stand up against crowd pathology, which was driven by totalitarianism. This is almost undeniably a product of secularism, and definitely supports the idea that secularism does more harm than good. Um, author of the Gulag Archipelago, um, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, was a prisoner in the Soviet Gulag camps for around 25 years. He explained the process of how the communist ideologue progressively engulfed Russia. A great disaster has befallen Russia. Men have forgotten God. That's why all this happened, he concluded. He partially made this claim because living in the camp, he observed that those who coped best with the terrible conditions were those who held on to religious faith. Um, from, from this, we can derive that religion helps people make it through some of the hardest times. It offers hope for something better. Marx called religion the opiate of the masses and claimed that it kept people submissive, offering them illusory spiritual goals. Um, I did an edited version of this and I said, well, Jordan Peterson responds to this and says, if religion is the opiate of the masses, then communism is the methamphetamine. <laughs> um, so you can derive from that what you will. Um, anyway, perhaps this isn't such a bad thing, um, offering them illusory spiritual goals. Perhaps this isn't such a bad thing. If the belief in a heaven helps people cope with the inescapable suffering of reality, then is that not all that matters? Um, in moments of desperation, one should grab onto any rope which is thrown at them. That may mean adopting what seem to be subjective false beliefs, such as the belief in God, to help them through, rather than rather than facing up to the objective fact that we are all being that we are being worked to the bone each day as slaves in a pathological totalitarian regime. This may be a pragmatic short-term solution, but when slavery and genocide have unjustifiably become the norm, change should be the paramount goal. Um, going back to the Nietzschean idea of the death of God, which is essential when discussing this issue, um, this gave birth to moral relativism. The West was founded upon the idea that Christian morality is axiomatic. And this axiom was predicated on the idea of the almighty authoritative figure, God. Secularism created a fragmentation within society, which is still prevalent in society today, but was at the biggest detriment in the 20th century, as I have previously discussed. This moral relativism meant that people were left to create their own values. Most, if not all, were unable to do so. So in a desperate attempt to find a new axiom, they put their faith in the state who attempted to override the apparent falsehoods of traditional values and replace them with political ideals such as Marxism and fascism. The problem with these secular ideas of how society should be run is that they had no strong foundation. This led to an inevitable and detrimental de demise. Um, Religious structures have roots spanning back thousands of years, maybe even more. It's not something we can easily eradicate and perhaps we shouldn't be so eager to do so. We don't understand mor morality and we don't understand um, reality. Okay, I went on a bit of a rant here. Um, I'll read it out as I put it, but I, I, I did get um, told off for it. We don't understand reality. We don't understand human nature. We can't agree upon what is good in a meta-ethical sense, yet a large proportion of contemporary thinkers such as a large proportion of contemporary thinkers seem adamant that secularism is the best thing for society. This is highly presumptuous and oxymor oxymoronically a highly unscientific perspective to hold. 
solely based on the empirical evidence offered by the 20th century, all in the name of secularism. So yes, secularism does more harm than good. Yeah, and I did that, and I thought it was, I didn't think it was A star standard, but then she marked it, my teacher, and um, yeah, and she said she liked it, she she thought it was, um, it was good because I, I implemented, well, it, it wasn't, like a typical essay because I implemented Solzhenitsyn and I went down a different line of thinking like it wasn't necessarily the things that we'd learned in the in the classroom but it was just I don't know a, a little bit of a creative essay I guess and yeah I thought it was interesting so there's that um secularism essay um I've got another one on utilitarianism so I might do that one as well and then that will be it for all my essays for now anyway <laughs> I've got another one that I wrote um last Monday, but I, I handed it in yesterday for marking, um, because I, I didn't hand it in straight away because I thought I didn't think it was very good, and I don't know why because I read it back and I'm like, well, there's nothing wrong with it, but I've, I don't know. Anyway, I'll, I'll let you know what I got on that one. So yeah, um, thanks for watching.